All right, so hey, Vlad, what are you doing on December 22nd, say 2032? Uh, nursing off a hangover from celebrating my 62nd birthday. Oh, I hope to be there. <laughs> well, Me too. You might, you might want to keep that day clear because that's the day that NASA says a massive asteroid might hit the Earth. Asteroid 2024 year. Four. 2024 YR4. Oh, YR4. There we go. <laughs> I thought that YR was short for year. I was like, what? Okay, was first spotted back in December. On Tuesday, NASA calculated a 3.1% chance of impact. Now, that is the highest ever recorded, but there's good news. Yesterday, the chances plunged to 0.28%. Wow. So what does all of this awesome. mean? We had to bring in somebody who knows how to... Tell us what we should be concerned about. That is best-selling author of Merlin's Tour of the Universe, A Traveler's Guide to Blue Moons and Black Holes, Mars, Stars, and Everything Far. That's a big title, Mr. <laughs> Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. Welcome. Who's going to join us well, thanks, to thanks. break all of that down. So, yeah. yeah, should we be worried? No. <laughs> well, because the numbers keep shifting. Well, well they because, do. all right, so you, uh, in, in your opener, you noted that it was recently discovered, just back in December. Right. That's just a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. And when you just discover something, how much of its orbit do you actually have? It's only a tiny segment of the total orbit that it enjoys around the sun. And so from that, we want to then extrapolate into the future, okay. and that comes with uncertainties. And so with uncertainty comes a percent chance of the risk. But as the days get closer, as you get more of a baseline of data, mm -hmm. that uncertainty will do one of two things. It'll go to 100% mm. or to zero. Mm. It's not gonna hang out in the middle zones. Oh. And what it's, what's been happening is it, in the last 36 hours, it dropped from 3% down to 0.28%. So should we be concerned if it starts to go up? It won't likely go up once it's trending down. Oh, okay. Oh, that's it won't fast. likely go up, unless, okay. some, unless something out there nudges it. That we so you say <laughs> that this is a good time for us to redouble our efforts to put what you're calling an asteroid defense system into place. Yes, because uh, even though it won't likely hit us, mm -hmm. why not use it as, this is a universe sending a shot across our bow, alerting us, hey, these things are real, they could do damage, why don't you prepare to do something about it? Mm. Because I, I don't want to be the laughing stock of the galaxy as being the only intelligent species with a space program that did not prevent its own extinction. Because you know if the dinosaurs had NASA, they would have deflected that asteroid and they'd be here instead of us. But okay, so in all seriousness though, even if there is a defense system that is somehow created, it would probably take some time. So let's just, Hypothetically, if an asteroid did hit, most of the Earth is water. What sort of impact would it really have? So this asteroid, we think it's maybe 50 meters across. So that's, that could take out a small town. Okay. And in a big city, it would destroy a central part of the city. Mm -hmm. There'd be many injuries in the perimeter. If it hits the ground, it would leave a crater nearly a mile across. Wow. So this is serious damage. But most of Earth is water. And most of what is not water is uninhabited. So unlike in Armageddon, where bits and pieces of that asteroid, they seem to have GPS aim, that one of them decapitated the Chrysler building. Right. It was like, <laughs> you know, how much of Earth's surface is occupied by the Chrysler building? Right. Right? Right. Or even by Manhattan. If you go to a globe, you can barely find Manhattan. Yet all those asteroids were hitting Same our important in monuments. Cities, yeah. yeah. So what about- Holly, that's Hollywood for you. Yeah. The, the DART um, <laughs> system that was used recently to move an asteroid off of its trajectory. How yeah. does that work? Yeah, so this was the double asteroid redirect test. Mm -hmm. A mission flown by NASA to there was a, an asteroid uh, pair that orbited each other, which means you had very good data on if you were successfully to nudge it, can you then measure how much it nudged? It was successful, it got nudged, it was like, yes, put tick in that box so that we know how to nudge an asteroid. Now, if there's one with our name on it that could put our lives at risk, we'd like to know that we're in a position to do something about it. So very quickly, we saw this one. What about the ones we're not seeing? Well, so the, we, we, fortunately, the ones that will do the most damage are the biggest, and those are the easiest to detect. So the smaller ones, they'll, they'll come and hit, and you've got to watch out for those. Mm. Well, you can't watch out for right. them. Uh, if we know in, well in advance, you can actually clear out an area uh, if we know exactly where it's going to hit. But this one, with the rate going from, with the risk going from 3% down to 0.28%, I can say down. we can 
kiss the asteroid goodbye. Because I don't want to hear <laughs> it. Hey, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Okay, uh, that's very good. Can I say that? You can say that. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Okay. Always great to have you.